Hey guys, so I've decided, thanks to all of your advice and guidance, we're gonna stick with this machine. And uh, I'll see if I can get another ring for it. It'll only take a second, literally two screws and I can pop it, pop a new ring in. But today's plan is to get this down to the bare bones and then see how it's gonna sit in the boat and how we're going to build a means of fixing this engine in place. So essentially it's gonna sit like this. Here. And I want it to be about one third of the way back initially, and we can we can further refine that. But uh, it's going to be a bit higher, and it's going to be slightly offset, and that's going to allow the flex shaft to go down to a union down here, and that union will connect the two, or connect the flex shaft to the uh, the drive shaft of the propeller. But uh, by offsetting it, we will be able to reduce the angle at which those two meet, because um, if I'm setting it like here which we could do, it would just mean that the flex shaft, it would just mean that the machine will be able to, or the machine won't be able to apply as much torque. Torque will be lost through the flex shaft. So if we can have even a direct drive would be amazing from a union, because again, you're reducing the torque and the shorter the, shorter the drive, the better. So if I can even have it here, again, less torque will be lost through that flex shaft. But anyway, that's the plan. But what I need to do is still maintain cooling. Even this boat driving is not going to be enough to cool it down. And when you come to idle it, again, it's it's going to get too hot. So I'm keeping the bare minimum. The starter, of course, the clutch and all that will be on here in a minute. But the starter, and to keep the starter in the right position here, it has to be braced up against the outer case. But a lot of this outer case is not necessary. So what I've gone and done is I've taken a Sharpie pen and I've marked around where I want to cut and remove all of the excess that is literally just bulk. We aren't going to use the original fuel tank because that's going to elevate the machine higher. And the lower we can keep the center of gravity in the boat, the better. We don't want, we don't want weight way up. So we're going to probably take another tank, maybe this one. I'm not sure. The reason why I thought this one would be good is easy filling. And also it's got uh, three screws, which allow me to screw that down into a brace in there. And I can just run fuel tubes. Doesn't matter about that. If anything, that's great to be able to move the tank around, obviously without the crankcase and the piston. Great to be able to move it around to find the best balance point for the machine. So what I'll do, bandsaw still broken, is we're gonna cut around here. I'm gonna use a handsaw, I'm gonna use a Dremel. And we're gonna take this center section out and what it's gonna maintain, it's gonna get rid of this top spark plug. We don't need to protect the spark plug from anything. It will get rid of all this. It will get rid of all this excess material here and it will maintain the shape that is required for cooling. So without further ado, That is the weight of all the plastics we've saved so far. We've still got a tiny bit more to go, but we're at 600 grams. And uh, that's the uh, front cover, the back cover, and the parts we've cut off. See how much, it, and now that boat will weigh that. So it's zeroed out. The boat currently weighs a thousand grams, a kilo. So that is over half the weight of that. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. We'll take that off. Six grams there. It will fluctuate ever so slightly, but. And 600 there. Crazy, isn't it? Just, just that recoil on its own. Pretty much zero. Two grams, nothing. Is 215. Sorry, the recoil and the deflector. They're actually two separate pieces. We need both, of course. So yeah, that weighs th three times the amount of that. Well, that's just plastics. There's no, no trickery, no hiding anything inside here. Just all of the hardware, all of the junk, the screws that keep everything on. Don't need any of those. Let's stick that on and we'll see how it looks. So there we go. You can see we've got all that plastic that we're gonna remove that lip there. We're gonna take that off so that it's flush with the side. 
Now that's the other side, a bit ugly of course at the moment, we've still got some more plastic to remove. And of course it's all gonna get sanded right down so it's smooth. I'm then going to prime it and paint it black. So it will uh, kind of look kind of cool. But uh, now that I put that in the boat, that's the wrong way, but you can kind of see how small of a package it can be. And uh, so yes. Looks good, hey? Hopefully it'll rip. Hey guys, it's the next day and uh, felt like doing a bit more on the boat rather than the engine. The engine, um, I need to, I've actually figured out a way in how I want to mount it, which I'll show you shortly, but I actually want to give this a layer of fiberglass, or actually at least on the joins, the fiberglass on the joins, but uh, that means we're going to have to rough up the joins. We'll probably rough the whole thing up because then it will take the epoxy better, the, the, the thing better. But uh, anyway, let's get right on with it. <laughs> I've gone over all the sharp edges. Everything's sanded down. I've just popped to the shops and got myself some more um, of the resin. And now I just need to get this dust off. Right, now we're gonna put some uh, acetone on it. So that is the uh, fiberglass done. It's come out really nicely, beautifully smooth, nice and flat everywhere. No excess resin globbed everywhere. It's uh, just a, a really nice thin coat. And uh, then I'll, all I'll do from here is give it another couple of coats of just resin, no more fiberglass. I'm only doing one layer of fiberglass, which is just gonna give it that little bit more structural rigidity, a bit more strength bit more support on all these joins and uh, it'll also give the next couple of layers of resin something to bond to to grip to so uh, yep it's done really well very happy Well, that is the third coat, and I don't think I'm gonna do any more now. I've laid this the thickest, 
and I'm just about covering the thickness of the material. I'm just about, I can still feel it just slightly, but um, I think I want to wait for this to fully cure. And then if you look here, there is a bit of there. There's a lump there, a little bit of extra resin. And uh, so I want to sand that away. Um, but for now, let's leave it there and uh, we'll go and start on the engine and I'll show you the mounting areas that I'm thinking of and we'll we'll take it all apart well take it more apart in fact you can probably see it out there on the window uh, got to take some uh, more bits off it the the flywheel it's kind of like the fan and the back reed cage uh, those are coming off and that's where I'm thinking of mounting some brackets that's the recoil that we need to obviously refine and uh, sorry, that's the air deflector we need to refine that's the recoil that's all okay we don't have to worry about that just yet what we want to do is find a means to mount this to the boat. This is um, the bare bones. Of course, we need the air deflector to circulate the air around and up over the cylinder fin. So that's going to go on in a second. And then of course, we've got the flywheel. So with those in place, uh, that, that's all good. So what I'm thinking, I've got connector plates. These are uh, 0.8 of a millimeter uh, thick. And I'm thinking of doing two and what I'm thinking is for one side, if I take this off, I'll get a connector plate bigger than this. And I'm going to get one without these holes in it. We don't need the holes in there. And I'll cut a central hole that can go over this, over this bearing uh, support. And then it can drill in to these four holes. And that's going right into the crankcase. You are literally grabbing the crankcase. So when that's in place with the holes, then the air deflector goes over the top. Now we're going to have to cut off this little tongue here so that we have movement for these. So I have space for this basically. And I'm going to then bend this so it's an L shape. So when it's sitting in the motor and bent, it will go down and out, and that will offer me the ability to be able to bend them so that I can angle the engine the correct position to contact the uh, union. And then do the same thing. I'll have another connector plate here. It will L-bend that way, a more um, obtuse angle, because of course we're this way. And that will then give me two means to grab hold of this engine and secure it down to, da, da, da. I'll do a cross section. We've got the hull like this, and we've got little ribs, whatever you want to call them, on the inside of the boat for structure. And then what I'm thinking of doing is, that's going to be a, a piece of probably pine, and I'm going to cut it in a triangle shape like this. And now I have Two options, just epoxy in this gap in here, so I can connect the wood together, connect the, the mounting plate or the mounting wood to the hull, or I can put screws here going from the hull into the boat. And then of course, I'm gonna screw this down onto that here. Beep, beep. The engine in the boat will look like this. Let's just say it's, it's flat. This is the, the bottom of the boat. You'll have uh, the transom here. The union is gonna be like that. The drive shaft is gonna be inside a metal tube. The propeller is here. The motor is gonna have one mount on this side going up like that, into the reed cage on one side. And then it goes up to the cylinder here. These are the fins. That comes down here. The flywheel goes here. The second brace will come down behind the flywheel and then along the base of the boat here. So I'll have screws going in here, in here. 
and then the crankshaft will come off at this same angle, have a little crankshaft and the clutch drum, and the connection between these two will probably be either a flex shaft or a solid rod. I'm not quite sure yet. And then the spark plug is up here, HT lead coil, and then the carby is gonna be this side. Muffler's this side, and I'm thinking, I haven't got a means to weld, so I might just put a deflector like that, so the muffler gases don't go back into the hull and start getting recycled back into the intake. It will be taking fresh air. I'm gonna put a couple of louvers in the, uh, in the um, roof of the boat, the top of the boat. So this way, exhaust gases are gonna come up, shoot up here, fresh air is gonna be passing over the boat and essentially it's gonna do that, which is the same way in the direction of the propeller. I think that's the simplest method to do that uh, without having to weld or cut anything off. And it maintains the baffle, which is good because it's going to be quiet on the water. Um, and as I said, fresh air can come in. There'll be, so if, if the, the roof of the boat is like up here, like this in here, there's going to be louvers here, which is just basically an air channel. So fresh air will come in down the louver in here into the cowie. That's the plan. Well, I'm gonna leave it there for this video. It's been long enough. I'm off to the shops, gonna get the bits that we need. And uh, we will continue from there. After that, I believe I'm gonna to have to start looking for the drive mechanism, the servos and the linkages. The position of the servos so that the linkages are as short as possible. Because of course, the longer the linkage, I'm just gonna be using spring still. The longer the linkage, the more flex in it and the less response you're gonna get from, uh, from actuating that servo. So short as possible. Uh, we've got a lot still to do, but we are making great progress. So I'll catch you on the next episode. Hope you enjoyed it and have a great one. Until next time, see you later.